structures. So we would, you know, okay, now we're going to have to dive, dive, dive to keep DVL bottom lock. Yeah. Yeah, because kind of like going around Endeavor, it seems like it's more like pictures from memory. You don't really, like, you can, yeah. we can kind of find whatever we need to. But I think if you actually see it on the model, you're like, oh, that's a lot closer. Oh, that's a lot further. That got yeah, a lot more tricky. Just looking at some of the 3D models online helped me to, you know, yeah. complete the picture in my little reptile brain I could yeah. Otherwise, it's just you're like, oh, I've only seen Grotto from this angle. Yeah. Maybe once there's a whole shadow behind that you have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I heard Norbit mentioned a few times here, but it's the way we have it integrated to Hercules, it's, you know, it has to be out front quite a way, so there's no way you could, like, have that on and do work around the vents. Yeah. It would destroy the thing but you almost need, need like you know a few dedicated dies and then you take the instruments off and then you go to work mm -hmm. after yeah that's you're basically doing AUV work with an ROV but yeah it take uh, you know there's some it takes way longer with ROV but the ROV can you know like stop <laughs> back up and go up and down where the AUV's more traditional AUV is more you know it's a fish, you, right? Torpedo. How would you like tie that into existing kind of multi beam like spatially if the AV or the ROV like you said, the beacons the nav's not great. Like you, you could be give or take thirty meters down there or whatever, right? But how do you tie that into put that information actually on a map like from the surface to know exactly where each thing is relative to the rest of the vent field? Well, if you have a INS on the ROV you can get more accurate so you you're again just pooling all of your sensors so you're using the multi-beam data the dvl data the the uh uh mru or imu on the on the vehicle yeah tying all that together and, and then giving you still have to like stitch it to maybe some surface multi-beam just to like kind of well, place yeah. it in the right spot right so the ins gets fed data from the ship position and the and the ROV position, okay. USBL, and it takes into account the DBL, and then the, you know, the motion of the yeah. vehicle, on, and it gives you a navigation solution based on all that input. Pure black magic for. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, you need a. Someone who kind of specializes in that. Jake, <laughs> Jake have two or three robots in the water, and they'd all have pose on each other, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Robot localization. Yeah. Isn't that where kind of where K 2s headed? Yeah, he does a lot of it's called SLAM, which is simultaneous localization and mapping. <clears throat> so you kind of fuse the two together, um, in a software, and uh, you kind of, they they both kind of help each other. So while you're mapping, you know more about where you are, <clears throat> and you can use that to help your localization. As opposed to just of the vehicle, but then also of the map. So then the map ends up being better. Mm -hmm. That would help Megan too in her trying to figure out not only what all the critters are but where they are. Yeah. That's a 
which critters? <laughs> when you're doing your um, uh, annotating all the video and oh yeah, and deciding what you're looking at, but are you, you're also figuring out where you're looking at them. Yeah, so I record um, what the general uh, terrain is like. So is it bedrock? Is it boulders? What kind of rock is it? Is it basalt? Is it carbonate? Um, and what each animal is on top of. So you can uh, do some analysis of do corals prefer to be on boulders over cobbles or are they exclusively on bedrock? Where do we see certain animals? Uh, and then also associations of animals with other animals. So, uh, for example, there is a star, a uh, snake star, that's always on a particular coral. Um, the Metallogorgia coral always has the same snake star on it. Every time we see it, they're always together. And so by making these observations, we're seeing these patterns over and over again. Um, we're also seeing differences in the community uh, depending on where we are. So different parts of the sea, same seamount might have vastly different communities. Um, and that's what's really great about when we do vertical transects along um, the base to the summit of a seamount. For example, we see the change in community as we ascend. So it's really interesting. I really enjoy that kind of work and learning about what animals are where and what they're doing. Right now we have the technology to figure out um, we can predict pretty well based on uh, multi-beam and, and the other in current flow and all that stuff where there's not animals but predicting where they are is kind of always a... Yeah, presence and absence can be hard. So we have a lot yeah. of presence data. Uh, when we see something, we know it's there. but. Uh, proof of presence doesn't necessarily mean proof of absence. So you might look in one area and not see an animal, but that doesn't mean that animal is not there because that area hasn't been well surveyed. Um, so just because if you're doing a transect and you see something, you know that it's always there, but you're not necessarily categorizing what is not there because, you know, you could just turn to your left and it could be there. Um, so, yeah, most of our data is presence only. Mm. Hiking up a mountain trail at night with a flashlight. It's basically what we're doing. <laughs> so we, we do see lots of really cool and novel things. Almost every dive or something that we haven't seen before. And it's always really exciting. But are you, are you also tying that information in in a, in a 3D sense, in a navigational sense? Oh, you can, uh, absolutely. Uh, especially if you're working with predictive modeling for these types of communities that we're surveying, um, you tie that in with the bathymetry uh, data that we've been collecting. So that's where you know my mapping background comes from. I had to understand mapping in order to better understand how deep sea coral communities might uh, grow and might choose certain locations. And so we often see corals growing in areas of high current flow, on hard substrate, and um, usually on areas that are facing into current. So you can predict what those environmental situations might be like based on the bathymetry and what we know about the, the surrounding ocean. And how do you, that's a lot of, I can't even say the word. Statistics. St thank you. Data. Yeah, it's how a lot you, of data. How do you how do you visualize that data in a in a 3D sense where you can? Um, so you can do um, modeling in a, a GIS program, uh, and that that'll provide you with a visual model of where you might see the things that you expect to see. Things so um, like on ridges and slopes it will show you, hey, this is where we think that corals will be found because that's where we found them in the past. And that's really informative for our dives because as a scientist trying to study certain species, you might want to target areas for study where there's a high likelihood that you'll encounter that species. Uh, and 
so little of the seafloor has been uh, observed and studied that we have to provide we have to rely on these types of models in order to get more information about where we might expect to see stuff. Um, we don't want to basically waste our time going somewhere exploring when the thing that we're looking for isn't there. So is that, do you have to have a specialized GIS software to visualize that data or can the general public um, look so at there it are in some like free, Earth yeah. Kind of format to <coughs> there are some free GIS programs that you can download that can do that type of analysis. Um, I used ArcGIS, which is a paid program. Uh, but as a student or someone who works at a university, you can get a discounted rate for a license for that. A QGIS is open source and free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, QGIS has the same usability as ArcGIS. Uh, QGIS. But yeah. Yeah, some of the added features aren't, you know, th that you would find in like a professional software, it's similar to like SolidWorks versus a free CAD software. Mm -hmm. But uh, is that like a challenging? Learning curve to learn how to use it, like for GIS. Apple, all it works is, you know. You know, GIS is a uh, pretty. I think it's pretty straightforward. For you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I f yeah, I feel like the average person would find that program very challenging to use. Yeah, I, I remember the first time I, I opened it, I was like, "What? What do I do? How do I get the maps?" <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even get. <laughs> That's a map. the most challenging part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> once you once you got the maps, then you're like, okay, it starts to make sense and. Um, you can intuitively find the things you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, but loading a project and bringing in your first set of maps and um, knowing how to use the different tools isn't necessarily as intuitive. Yeah. But there are lots of uh, online uh, tutorials that'll help you with doing exactly yeah, that. There's lots of YouTube and mm -hmm. video on all of that. It's easy. I mean, it's easy to download and open it up and start poking around. But yeah, after that... And getting maps in, that's the difficult part. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, how do I do this? Do you have that software, Jake? Uh, I do, somewhere on one of my computers. QGIS. QGIS. Yeah, the challenge is like, sometimes if you have large file sizes, it can be challenging to work with them. Um, so that's one of those things to, to keep in mind. I'm talking you need about to have like a good processing power on your computer. It's not an app I can put on my iPhone and. No, open no, the map it's a compu computer program. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty gloomy down here, eh? Gloomy? Yeah, it's a little cloudy, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Four hundred meters to go. We're getting there. So, have you played around with Blender, Jake? Taking that? No, I haven't. I hadn't even heard of that. Blender. Taking them. Blender's pretty cool, but it's also a learning curve. Yeah. Serious learning curve. Like just to make the donut was took me weeks. <laughs> Is it a like photogrammetry? No, it's a uh, 3D modeling software, but it's um, more graphical uh, modeling than it is uh, physical modeling. Okay. A lot of shaders. Um, you use Blender to create animations. So you can do. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's been used to make quite a few uh, movies, Hollywood movies, yeah. action movies. You can watch on uh, YouTube. You look up Blender, uh, Blender videos, and it's crazy what they can make. I forget his name. He's really good tutorials. Fine. But there's there's some um, there's a lot of models you can get and then just load up and play around with them. But there are some pretty cool uh, subsea ones where they're doing the light rays coming in, and they have like a grotto and fish swimming around. And oh, cool. Uh, a very of s small scale of what speaking you would. Speaking of making movies, Unreal Engine is free, which is pretty cool. You can yeah. do some pretty incredible things on Unreal if you master it. Especially the new version of Unreal is insane. Is that also a hefty learning curve? 
Oh yeah, no, oh, it's, it's yes. a specialty all on its own. Yeah. But a lot of online resources for that. Yeah. I mean, Unreal is what they use to build all these really fancy games. I mean. Yeah, that's in the. They're starting to use the use Unreal Engine for um, AUV simulations and testing. Oh yeah. And it's it's pretty crazy the things they can they can do with that. The amount of horsepower it takes they, to run Unreal Engine is absolutely insane. They have plugins to overlay like multi beam bathymetry into Unreal Engine, so it's like looks like you're on the seafloor. <laughs> I've heard maybe I've heard that in connection with uh, ROV simulation. Yes, there oh, is nice. an ROV simulator that. Uh, oh yeah, that's what the Sebastian one is. Are they using that? To um, I don't know if they're using that. I know on Steam. There's a guy who's in beta right now with an ROV simulator. It's kind of funny. It's like a little ROV hanging off the back of Thompson. And yeah. they're integrating a lot of sea life and 3D uh, bathymetry and different things into it. I, I, ha um, I have that link here somewhere. I sent it to my teenagers and had yeah. them have a go. And they uh, their feedback was it needs a... Uh, it needs a mission. <laughs> It, they thought it needed a like a horror game aspect, something <laughs> scary. It wasn't scary enough for them. They got bored with it pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's kind of how yeah. I was. I was like, okay, this is cool. We're flying around, but what's the actual mission? Like, yeah. I need to go plug something in. I need to go like do survey something. something. Yeah. I need to yeah. do something complicated. Dan's kids are like, where's the megalodon? They got bored with it in like uh, less than a day. They burned it down. To I'd like to see is use like this game as a training tool and integrate it into our system. Exactly, yeah. So when we're not diving, you can sit there and actually use the hooks controls into the game as an interface, like a simulated so version of it. Is that one, I'm trying to find the link to it now, is that one uh, using Unreal Engine to? Uh, I believe so, I'm trying to find it. Yeah, it's too far back in my history. Ah, here it is. It. It's called Sub ROV. Sub ROV. Sub ROV. That's the Steam one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I was in a collaboration with the guy developing it a while back um, when it was an alpha. And it was definitely interesting. Um, Because with like our program, with uh, Hawaii, we, we don't dive very much, so our pilots get rusty. I'd love to see a simulator for the arms. I know there's a few companies out there that have them, but... Uh, yeah, there's some... Uh, pretty, uh, there's some really... You're going to be able to add the capability of freeze fail and um, <laughs> jitter and... <laughs> It would be really interesting to work in some of our bugs, you know? Yeah. Like, what do you do? Troubleshooting is a big part of the job. Well, my, like, I have an RC uh, flight simulator, real flight, and for flying model airplanes. Yeah. And you can actually add in the bugs. Like, oh, at this, and you're weather. randomly going to have an aileron failure or radio interference or the motor's going to cut out. How do, you, how do you solve this problem? Mm -hmm. Like, I had it once where I could have right aileron, but I'd only get, like, 20% left aileron. Trying to make it back to land that way is very difficult. <laughs> I'm moving us back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> There's been talk of doing a Hercules, uh, Atlanta Hercules. Kind of looks like a profile. Simulator. Like a face. My, my, it's a, it's my arc a isn't as smooth as Trevor's. <laughs> like a, a guy wearing a hat. Oh, yeah. Well, Trevor wasn't doing that. It, he was just not yeah, touching it. Yeah, true, true. Speaking of Trevor, you could slow the sonar down to less I ludicrous speed. I did. Oh. <laughs> Is it still on 25-meter divisions? And I 
made it. No, the the mezzo. Oh, the mezzo. Yeah, because we're gonna want it slowed down to pick up the wire when it's coming down. That will pick up the wire better, slower. Uh, One point eight. Let's see how the Subal is being division. developed in collaboration with Bermuda Institute of Ocean Scientists and Schmidt. Yeah, that's the one. Partially funded by National Science Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Cool the stuff. NSF is funding a video game. How cool is that? <laughs> Our tax dollars at work. <laughs> Is it a video game, or is it more of a training tool? It's kind of meant to be both, I think. I'm yeah. not sure. And it also some of the... the Jonathan's working on some outreach stuff, like stuff with that, too. Oh, yeah. Have you, have you, has he had you uh, put the headset on, the virtual reality headset? No, he sent me all the stuff for it, but it was like, right, I was getting ready to come it's, back out here. It's and pretty crazy. You put it on, and you're like, you feel like you're in... The underwater environment, like looking around, there's like a scuba diver coming by you, and you can like you physically move and you move through the environment yeah. because the cameras have like stereo vision. It can, and then if you get close to a wall, you stick your like hand out and it disappears. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, we were gonna uh, load it up, and then um, both of my kids have the Oculus, and they're they changed the account something i don't know I, I had we had to go through the whole dance to re-register all that and hook it up to the computer and all that and we never did get around to actually then of course they got sidetracked as soon as they had it all hooked up again they wanted you know this game or that game and <laughs> yeah, that's about how far i get with my oculus uh my quest 2 i bought it and it's literally sat in a bowl of pretty much majority of its life Every time I pull it out, it's like a pain to get it all set up and everything. And I'm looking forward to later in this year. He's, Jonathan's supposed to bring out all this high-end gear he's got, get it all set up. The fun cruise. Yeah, I want to give it play in the ROV with an Oculus on. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You think so, until you get seasick from it. Yeah, I imagine I'll... I don't know. I tried it, you know, years and years ago with the 3D vision thing with the manipulator, and I, I couldn't <laughs> get it off of my head fast enough. It was making me physically ill. Yeah. Well, that was because the frame weights. Yeah, the frame weights, the way the way they're tricking your eyes. You guys getting seasick now? How does that happen? I know, right? Uh, I thought you guys were immune. No, we're not immune. There's no. certain frequencies that still get us, you know, we get grouchy or sleepy or not quite, you know, feeding the sharks sick, but <laughs> I still feel it. All right, folks, video is doing a shift change. Thank you very much. Thank you. Y'all got minus 25 up there? Yeah, I'm slowing it. Speeding up Hurricane, slowing down the winch. Roger. It's my crazy hair, it's okay. I know, I know why they always turn it up so high. I always turn it down as low as possible. August pilot over here not paying attention. <laughs> That's what an Argus pilot does. Gets distracted. Are 
you get a bunch of nerds talking about something. And yeah. then, uh, <laughs> Forget what we're looking at. This, uh, <laughs> Game over, insert coin. <laughs> Yeah, let's not see that loss of signal uh, screen. That's the uh, really bad one. <laughs> reset. Where's the reset button? Difficulty level. <laughs> uh, I've seen that no signal screen way too many times. I do not want to see it again. Back on comms. So it is. Embari has a computer-generated image beams. of uh, Endeavor. It's on the... Uh, Wikimedia Commons. I thought I, I could swear there was one you could, you know, rotate around and. There's too many buttons on this chair. 80, 80 meters altitude. You got green lights? Yep, four beams. <laughs> Go on to manual. Roger. It's good to see uh, Hercules and Argus sonar there. That's a good sign. I swear you need to reset the values on uh, Grafana for the Delta, Dan. Sometimes you got to refresh the page, and if they got too many Grafanas open there, it starts uh, no, I'm thinking a little more wonky. Of, uh, your 50 meter tether limits versus your 30 meter tether limits. Still zooming down at 30 meters a minute. Slowing down. Yeah, 27 meters up bottom. Yep. Okay, I'll stop. 35 meter delta. Roger. I'll come around. No, thank you. No, thanks. It's a good heading. Is this a good heading? <laughs> I haven't even started doing anything yet. Made a few check marks. So that it. I'll bring my head around to follow you. Yep. Was it? Gotta oh, have this guy what made uh, it, what front made it cool. forward. What made it so oh. cool? The one got you on that come forward. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it. Hey, look, there's hook. I essentially started once the transect stopped. Coming down. Coming once down. Once the transect stopped, that came up. <laughs> so I missed it. So what's the objective of this dive? Um, <coughs> so we have a failed auxiliary platform. So remember. Let's, uh, uh, hold on, guys. Yeah. Let's get down and get sorted before we get distracted with the uh, last 50 meters here. Yeah, just gotcha. let me know. Sorry, yeah. Uh, we don't want to crash into the seabed or the. Let's get to know the neighborhood first, then we'll talk about what we're going to do when we get there. This winch goes from like five Here meters a minute to thirty meters a minute. Coming in, like a couple degrees. You'll see him on this screen. So. Oh, that was his bottom, maybe. 
Oh, it's some jellyfish or something. Uh, I can't hear you. You're on mute. But I can't hear you. Yeah. Is your volume all the way down? No. Check, check. Fabio? You're plugged in? Yeah. You're on SBL? I don't know. Can someone do a mic check for audio or for check, Fabio? Check, check, check. Check one, two. Do you hear that, Fabio? SCF. SCF seat here. All right. You can you hear anybody? Would we like to white balance over I on the bottom? I can hear you, Fabio. Yeah, let's wait till the chatter dies down here, right. Jake, and then we'll yeah. focus on uh, ROV operations. All right, keep going with the ROV where we can quiet down. Sorry, too many things happening at once. Navigator's busy, pilot's busy. <coughs> Co-pilot is also got some things to do up there. Tick boxes. Mm -hmm. And you got the bottom uh, dive log complete as well, Danny. Yeah, you take all the gauges. Gauges look good. Check. Looks the same as a descent. Looks good. Everything else is nominal. Temperatures, humidity, water checks, all that good stuff. How you check your water checks when you're in Nevada, but just, yeah, I just have a glance at the numbers at least. Yeah. Oh, those water checks. Yeah. No leaks. No, I mean, uh, yeah, all the numbers on the GUI there. Yeah. Nominal. At least look at them, man. Eh? No, I do. Some uh, waypoints there for you to explore, I think, Jake. And also, we need to uh, again. We have the bathymetry on the ROV nav, but not uh, which includes our snail trail. And whatever works best for you guys, I'd love to get a white balance in. <coughs> we can white balance. Let me know when you want. Yep, on you guys, whenever you're ready. Can you fix the nav screen for us too, Lynette, when you get a chance? Fix how? Uh, last time we had to turn off the bathymetry layer so we oh, can see the, the ROV trail. snail trails. Oh, that's... The bathymetry's not really useless, useful for us on the ROV nav. We shouldn't have to turn it off. We can well, if I can't we want. I can't see the ROV snail trails. Something about like well, the order of bringing yet. up the bathymetry or the... It's, um, we'll need those when we <coughs> get the wire in the water and see, you know, how things are trending, where we've been, all that stuff. I think they're green or something. And Basically, last time we had to turn off the layer for the bathymetry, and then they appeared. Okay. That or Jake's not moving, and we can't see him. I'm not sure which, but I haven't seen the trend. Like. Yeah, there should just be like you decide, you choose what is on the top layer. So now Hercules, Argus, and whatever beacon we activate should be on the top layer. All right. We didn't know how to do it last time. So if Jake moves, it'll leave a little green trail behind him. Should. We'll go find a instrument, Jake. All right. Bring my head around. 
sonar target probably or it's a big battery box, right, Dirk? Yeah, battery box. Do we want to do our white balance? If you guys are ready, I'd appreciate it. All right, we can white balance quick. Thank you so much. Bring the arm out. Oh, it's coming out. Oh. What's going on here? And can I get the uh, lasers off? Thank you lasers so off. Bring that out just a little bit more. You want the arm out, Father? Just a tad, yeah. Thank you. down just a touch, just a little bit more in, in frame if possible. Perfect, thank you. All right, frame's gonna go black for a couple seconds. All right, we are good, thank you. All right. Full and wide. So the biggest thing in this area is the mud mat. And everything, the whole site's only about 50 meters wide. And there's just an auxiliary platform and a buried um, seismometer. A couple bead bags and a media converter can, that's all. I can't see from here. You might pick up something on your. Uh, I think there's something. Try tech. Straight ahead. If uh, our offset is. Oh yeah, there we go. What it has been, it might be like 10, 15 meters here south. South. Come down five meters on the delta. Coming down five meters. I still don't see the snail trail in it. We could turn all that green stuff off and just make it a black background. Thank you.
They're fully stretched out. Yep. Is there any uh, legit targets to the south in them? Um I didn't see any, but I can no. come down a little bit. Mesotech's got something in front of us, but off to the northwest. There we go. Now we got a snail trail. Thank you. Look to the south for a minute, Jake. Yep. Looking south. Hmm. Maybe look back at Atlanta. It should stand out loud and proud on uh, seeking from. Uh, with this bottom, unless it's downhill or something. Maybe range up on the, oh here I can do it for me. <laughs> there it is. Ah. Maybe. Maybe. Still five meters off bottom. Yeah, it's okay. <coughs> it could be rocks, I don't know. That looks man made there. How far apart are they, Dirk? Uh, two targets, 30 meters apart. Between uh, the, the mud mat and the little platform. The mud mat's large. Yeah, one of those targets. That one to your right is definitely man made. Yeah. And they're essentially east west of each other. The smaller target should be towards the west. Bigger target on the on the east. Uh if we're looking north. If you're looking north, yeah, yeah. On the map. Yeah. Say it's that one in front of you to your left is a battery. <laughs> What's the range on your forward looking sonar over here? At the moment, 30 meters. Uh, there's okay. a stick or something. It looks like a log or something. <laughs> there's your man made <laughs> object. What there, there. is a log doing out here? Can you zoom in on that thing? See what it is? The rock? A quick snap zoom video. Be interesting it's to a rock. see the it's a man made rock. Uh, it's a man made rock. Huh. Yeah, it looks like petrified wood, actually. It does. Uh, yeah, that's a wood. You're just going to get some snaps here on the still camera if you can. Uh, Sorry, I'm uh, at the end of the tether, so I'm getting tugged around. Okay. Lots of fuel right on my head. Are your bottom lights on? The down lights? Yeah, yeah, down lights? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, you're pretty far north now, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Good to come wide? Come, come wide, yep. We've been seeing things actually like 20 meters south of what the target tells yeah, us. We have. But I know we went down there, but didn't see anything. So the three targets on the nav screen are the ox platform. Which way should I go? There's a media converter can really close to the ox platform, and um, there's a mud mat way to the, to the east, and then there's a buried broadband seismometer. 
So I don't know what. Well, I can't see the nav. So oh, the, saying, one of them's the buried. BBS is to buried, so, yeah. yeah. But we should be seeing cables on the surface. There should be some. Should be cables around. Yeah. Maybe. It's making me feeling feel great about dropping that platform that one or one and a half or half meter. If it's all mud like this. Yeah. Well, I can. Because the sensor is on rocks. Oh. No, it's not necessarily. Uh, never mind. It's buried. Um, you might have just missed it, Jake. Maybe it's more to the east. So the cable's running east-west, is it? Yeah. That's correct, yeah. And that's a PBOF oily, 70 meters. Yeah. And it's essentially running. I think you got to maybe go a little more south. A little they more south. Cross the, should cross the cable to the, to the BBS. In theory. Uh, I don't know what these depressions are. It looks like something dragged. Could just be a ridge. Yeah, there's some targets out there, 20 meters away, on a good square ish. Should cross the cables though. Yeah, I think our crossing the cables is high likelihood of finding it. Yeah, if they're so east west. Thirty meters go. north north south, looking for them. So. Can you get another fifteen meters? So that oh, I see it. Oh, <coughs> well, there's something. Yep. Yep, there's a platform. I don't feel the. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Okay, so. Let's go. We're coming in from the north. Okay. We could yeah. go get a fix on Six, that. Yeah. We'll know where we are. I like your idea, Dan, of putting lights on all these platforms. Yeah. Come down five meters. Coming down. It's quite a bit south. Alright, you want to get a fix on this platform once I get over it? So our landing zone is going to be anywhere where both those cables can reach, the oily as well as the um, the one going to the broadband size monitor. So I don't think we're going to have a problem doing that. So do you want to get the other one headed down? or? Yeah, I think we should start that process as long as we are comfortable with how the RV is sitting. and. Whatever. Uh, but I think we can get that's not going to change between now and an hour from now, right? All right. I don't think. As long as we're willing to fly around, that's fine. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you're ready well, for it. Dep it depends. Um, if we don't have to move the ship around, then I don't see any reason not to start running the package down. Yeah. Even the mud mats from here is 30 meters away. So. 30 meters, which direction? Mud mats towards the west. Towards the west. Okay, we might have to move. Well, if we. Yeah. Actually, no. uh, if we get them going by the time they get it overboard, we can put Atlanta where Herc is now. Yeah. And that yeah. should let us reach everything. Yep. I think we should let them go. Yeah. Get going for sure. Yeah. 
20, 30 meters south Atlanta. Okay, you want to ship move now? Yeah. South? Or you want Atalanta where you are? Uh, Atalanta where Hercules is, I guess. Okay. There's a skate or a ray in the background. Is there anything you want to look at while we're... There, there's a skate back there. Bridge now. Oh, yeah, I see him. Let's see what you got there. Can we move Jake, if you got the leash 30 for meters 140, please? Thank you. Deep sea skate. Well, that platform looks interesting. Uh, well, he's coming to you. Yeah, he's an assist. My courage. He's like the light. <laughs> Go into the light. Go to the light. Gotta get our National Geographic shot right here. I've never seen them hover like that. I didn't know they could hover. Actually, this is probably the long, long nose gate. You can uh, talk about our tasks now, Dirk, if you want to, while we're having a Whoa. skate moment, <laughs> or we're having a skate moment. Okay, um, Decker's prepping the instrument to put it over the side, but in the meantime, what we want to do is currently this platform on your right, the auxiliary platform is not working. We have a repaired platform that we want to come down and test to see if everything's functional. So the first step would be for us to lower the new platform down in a position where both the broadband seismometer cable, the white cable here, and the orange cable can reach the new drop location. Mm -hmm. We'll lower the, um, the new platform down on the wire with an acoustic release. We'll release it about a, a meter off the bottom so it's not banging on the bottom. And uh, then we're going to do some, and then we'll recover the deployment cable so that's out of the way. And then we're going to do some testing, swapping some of these plugs around. Meanwhile, the new cable would be rigged on deck with a pink hook and a clump weight. So at the end of this dive, we'll recover one or the other, and uh, either one will be hooked on to by the pink hook. So we'll send a bare pink hook with a clump weight, and we'll try and fly the hook on to either one of these. So is that the seismometer in the background to the south there? Uh, I've got here um, bead bag debris. So the only thing right. that we know the seismometer, if we follow the white cable, should be fairly, fairly close. Uh, the white cable goes to the seismometer. And that seismometer cable is probably staked down at yeah, some point. So so I'm assuming, I think that debris field right here, I think the seismometer is right around there. That's what my charts are showing me, or my map is showing me. And can, can we get a confirmed position of the old platform, ideally looking f from the connector panel so that we are facing the connector panel because the um, Nortec has um, direction sensitive so we need a heading of this platform at some point. Thank you. The one I was just on? Yeah. We can go back there. Let's just get an okay. idea of where this is. It's showing that it's by the beat bags on my map but this cable will go. It could snake around. If you get, I don't know if you got leashed, Jake, but if you get closer to the so that cable will be staked down at some point yeah, going to the be, seismo yeah. and we don't want to rip those up if we can avoid it. Yeah, we don't want to drag across the bottom near the seismometer. Yeah. I think it's it's got to be here. If this is de if these are empty or full bead bags, if they're empty-ish, that's yeah. probably where it is. Okay. I don't have the leash to get over there yet. But okay. Look to your right just a bit if you can. Could be towards our right, you're right. Could be there. Sometimes you can see a little white debris pile from the. Yeah, somewhere, class it could be speeds. somewhere in there if you have, like, I don't know, stuff to say. 
I would guess uh. from the mud mat, if the um, auxiliary platform is 31 meters at 268 from the mud mat, the broadband seismometer is 48 meters at 253 from the mud mat. Uh. So if we can use those offsets. Maybe we well, we don't. We don't need to. So it's well away to well, the. The only thing is the cables have to reach. All right. So the cable does kind of oh, look kind of strung out in one direction, and if it, if we can't bring it towards the west, we have to land the new platform towards the east more. Given the offsets above, it looks like we're in the neighborhood of where it is. So. Yeah. Lynette, do you mind? Can we put pins down for those two sites based off? our current offset so once we get back to the um, to this frame we can kind of get a theoretical point for the mud mat and then a theoretical point for the broadband does that make sense yeah uh, well we have one for the uh, instrument yes we'll get the new one for the instrument and then we can kind of space ourselves based off that so you want me I mean, to apply this same offset to these other two targets? From once we're back at the instrument platform, yeah. Uh, those look like the empties from burying the seismo. Yeah, do. And then it's all stuck down with the rod. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't necessarily tell me where it is yet. Basically, I want this cable to be able to stretch to reach the new site. So yeah. that's the only restriction here. I think anywhere in here is probably good, though. In between the beam bags. Um, which way is the? Uh, I lost the pot there. If you're looking at the instrument, the beam bags are to the. It should be to south. south. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we have room in the oily. The oily can stretch further towards the west. I just don't know about the. We're probably gonna want to land the new one to the north just like we did with the um, with the RAS so Atlantis or 315 ish based on the ship's heading yep so just Atlantis behind us and Herc is yeah between reaches. Atlanta and the and the winch wire yep <laughs> so we'll probably yeah right underneath us somewhere maybe as long as, yeah, as long as the white one can reach, which is the big one, right? Yeah, so we'll have to offset, looks like, towards the white one side, because the orange one, what's, if you look to your left, Jake, what's the orange dude going to? It's got a lot of slack there. And a, yeah. What's that thing, Dirk? That's a media converter. We can pick that up and move it? Uh, it sure looks like it. I don't have a weight for it in water, but it looks like it's going to be around that, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds or something like this. Well, it looks like the cable comes off of it, and curls around to the left there, and then... To the mud mat, yeah. To, up to the mud mat. Yeah. Uh, Ulrike, do you know how long this cable is, the media converter cable to the mud mat? One sec. In theory, the mud mat's off to your left. Yeah, like 20 meters or something. It's 30 uh, meters. 31 meters. Yeah. 30 meters. We'll just get a cable link for this as well. I could see the crane on the deck moving. Croc. Hmm. Wondering where that went. <laughs> I don't think crocs sink. Floaters. Uh, the sonar target. 20, 20 meters. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 20 meters from here. So I think we have quite a bit of scope on the end of this oily. So the oily is, oh, that was a cool one.
Yeah, just like the seismometer at um, Mothra that we did, we don't have any dust caps or dummy plugs for these connectors. So it's not really something we can prep in advance. Right. What do you call the little black thing again? I always forget. Aqueduct. Aqueduct, yeah. That's We're going to TBOS it or? <clears throat> Anything else? Well, we want to try and look at? end up recovering it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we can, one thing we want is a position of this one um, and a heading. Yeah, okay. We'll I'm out. looking straight south. Straight south? You're okay with that? Oh, Ricky? Hey, Dirk, it's Jeff. And can yeah. we get a, and can we please mark this as position? Are you faster? Got it. Welcome. Dirk, did you hear Jeb? Did I hear what? You didn't hear Jeb, yeah. Uh, Jeb, you might have to turn on SPL on your... He's, he's wanting us to mark the position, which uh, we're, I think that's what we're doing. Can anybody yeah. hear me? I should be on SPL. Yep. Can you I can know? hear you. Dirk, you yeah. still can't hear me? I can barely hear you. What's oh, up? okay. I was just saying I, I worked with Trevor, and we uh, rigged up a dust cap plug that can go into the uh, broadband seismometer cable, the one with the weird reverse gender. Okay, so there's one we can do. Yeah, it should be on the ROV. Uh, I don't know why you're so quiet. It's yeah, I don't. So quiet. My mic is really close to my mouth. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everyone else is so loud. <laughs> Where, uh, did you guys get in the handover what we put on there? I neglected yeah, uh, it's on the dive, the, the, um, the no, dive plane, the dust cap. Roger. Hey, if I, it says gray, gray dust cap or something like that. Physically where? Um... I didn't get it's where not many places. Yeah, but didn't tell us anything about where look. the things all are, but we can take a look. I think I saw it in the front box. Right. That would make too much sense. That's where I would put it. Popping out. Yeah, I got bubble. Yep, there it is, I think. That, that gray, oh. gray thing? <laughs> hey, <Yep>. Roger. <laughs> no, the bubble's all the way down. So hey, is that up. what we want to do? We want to... Come up five meters, Danny. I don't know which way the wind's blowing here. How's the tether doing there? It's looking pretty good. I'm at 30, uh, 30 meters, uh, 35 meters off bottom. Right, that is coming right over Herc now. Yeah. Thirty-five meter delta. Right. I could probably continue that move and add another twenty meters. I think. What was that, Dan? We could probably continue that move another 20 meters, so we'll put Atalanta to the south. So when they lower this business, okay. we'll be to the south of where Herc is now. And that, uh, yeah, we, whatever bearing you used last time, we use that again, because we'll probably do the whole mess at like Bridge 315 now. or something. Can we move two zero meters, 140, please? Thank you. I'm going to uh, go down and have a look what they're doing on the deck there, okay. so I can see what's coming down to us. I'll find something to look at. 
feels like home down here. Bissell Sea Floor. Whole lot of nothing. Jellyfish. Sea cucumber right there. That could be an octopus. Nah. Oh, there's a cool shot. Sorry, Fabio. I'll take some stills for that. Yeah, look at the growth on that. Uh, on oh, our look steak. at all the little tentacles hanging out the back. <laughs> I think I'll land on the porch. Suction sampler. I bet if we turned on the suction sampler right now, we'd get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look like the seismometer's right here. No. Oh, dust cloud. It's another croc. Dan leaving his mark everywhere we go. So, post in the ground. Dan, so you're saying it's going to be hard to land the new platform? Oh, so you got Dan, uh, Went down to look at the deck. Oh, okay, gotcha. See what's coming down. I think, based on us not, with us not knowing where the um, where the broadband is, I think we just have to land it to the south of the old one. Okay. Because the white cable and the orange cable are also connected, and we can't dis uh -huh. like we can disconnect them, but they still have to reach each other too. So. Y'all ready? Ready. Yeah, back row ready. Do you want to try and take another look at this white cable? Yeah, it's... I think so. Oh. It did look like it kind of disappears, but... Yeah. Theoretically, it should be on a ring somewhere 48 meters from the... Um, from the button that. So, 
It will be slightly south of its original cable direction. Slightly south. Okay. They did a great job of burying the cable. <laughs> That's for sure. Can't even see a mound or anything, not a hole. Nothing. Maybe we can go find where it goes into the sand and go pick it up. No, <laughs> no we don't have to do that. Something on your left here? Is that just a hole? Just a hole. There's the beat bags again? Yep. Coming back uh, east. How long is that cable to the broadband? Seismometer. Oh, at this site. Where is the mud mat? The long cable. This one? Mud mat. Mud mat. Okay, mud mat. This 70 meters to media converter. No. So where's the broadband on this? Okay, did you have a target for where you want to drop this? Band seismometer, but right just south of this one, if you turn around, Jake, we can just have a look there. I'm just worried if we drop it slightly north that the uh, um, white cable won't reach. Roger, okay. Uh, we're working on getting our cable legs for that white cable right now. I'm facing north right now, so it would be like you're envisioning putting it right 
kind of where the bean bags are. Yeah, there's the like yeah. I think even even like here, if we have to put it on that side, okay. maybe there. But otherwise, just kind of like south of this, then it's kind of a, then it's a guarantee it'll reach. <coughs> Buttoning it up close to this one okay. might be possible too. Yep. So we want to put it really close to the existing platform. Yeah. Okay. Very Got close. It. Got it. Yeah, I would say like just right here somewhere, maybe a little further, like two, two, two three meters that way or two meters that way would probably be good. Okay. okay. I missed my chance down there. What was your chance? Oh, we should have put a beacon on the platform and the wire. I know we had to double our pleasure. Oh, yeah. I really keep Lynette busy up there. Then we wouldn't have to do that mental math, like how far did they lower it down, blah, blah, blah. Can you spin uh, Atlanta around, Denny, when you get a chance? Okay. Dirk, the standard length for the cable between the auxiliary platform and the broadband seismometer is 20 meters. Okay, so it's within, within 20 meters. Like probably around 11 or 12 or somewhere in that range. I would have yeah, there's a bit of curve on it, right? So, I think like this cable heading off this direction back to the mud mat is like a 70 meter cable. So we're probably very safe if we drop it here, ish, just free of the white cable. Yeah. Either there or south of the works, kind of be closer to the bee bags. Say again, what is this cable connecting? Pardon? Where is the cable running from and to those 20 meters? Uh, to the broadband seismometer, to the auxiliary platform in between those two. So this is actually a good shot. Um, can you, Jake, do you mind going a little lower down? And I'll just sure. show you what we're going to do here. Uh, just view of the aux platform and, uh, and the cables as they come out. So it's kind of a funny, funny setup. The orange cable coming in. Um, it's in, it's loose to disconnect from this Fletcher, so we eventually would have to remove that from the Fletcher. You can see the green cable off the back of the orange cable kind of goes into this here, like that. But this connector also goes into that white plume, so we have to can disconnect both things to be able to remove that um, aux platform. Okay. But we're not going to disconnect, unmate this from the green. Okay. The oily on the left, it, all it is doing is just connected from straight from here to the battery. It's not actually, we're never going to touch that one. And our uh, our reverse blanking plug is for the uh, middle one going to the seismo, the data, yep. or the uh, battery line, whatever that is. Yes, that's the one. So that's that reverse weird receptacle, not a pin connector. Yeah, which is supposed to uh, fit in our magnum, rumor has it. The... Um, the reason we're not doing any work now is because if we want, we don't have a dummy plug for the pins that's on the platform side. So we're just trying to minimize how much that's exposed, but mm -hmm. that shouldn't take too long once we're in position for that. Do we need to shut the battery off? Yes. So we could turn the battery off now. That's something we could do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In advance. If you are comfortable doing that, we can do that now. It's going to be from the other side, a little rotate -y. The battery is this one here, so we have to face that direction. Taking out a wrap here. Yep. Just, a wrap. just letting you know. I've got a way. wrap on the 681 as well. I need to spin them out. We don't care about no 68 wrap. <laughs> Probably taking one out, Danny. I am taking one out. <laughs> Probably taking two out because I was fighting it.
Where's the battery? Right there on the end. Oh, I see it. It's one of those flip up, rotate kind of things. Yeah. I'm just reading it in the uh, dive plan. Yeah, there's a good picture on the in the dive plan as well. But it's fairly straightforward. It's a good picture if you go look at the one on the deck too. Oh wait, it's not on the deck anymore. Too well, late. The deck's a little bit different. I was looking at it the other day. There's a good picture of that one too. Yeah. So does your um does your Hobbit winch have an Ethernet connection on it? No. No Ethernet. No nothing? Just coax. No Wi Fi? No, I mean to the winch itself, oh. to the uh, LCI-90 or whatever version you use. But we don't use it. It'll be cool to plug it into the mothership, have a read up, up here. Yeah. So if you can pin underneath that, I can pull the D-ring and then we rotate that whole handle up and around. Jet, was this... Um I don't know when you're stable. It's not in the off position right now. <coughs> looks like it's off. It's in the on position. Yeah, you can't close the clamp on the top unless it's in the on position. Okay, so it, the one over there is going down on? Because hey, the clamp is on. Yeah, it's going down in that position, right? It's definitely going down in this position here. Yep. And I, I looked before, I took pictures. Yeah, I think it says off position when the clamp was closed. Right. Yeah, the one on deck is off. I checked it was off and the clamp was closed. Yeah. So okay, so I, maybe this I, one. I, I didn't turn it on, but I looked. If you open yeah. it up, it will not close when in the on position. So this is like the deployment stake. Yeah, so this one's different than the other, I guess. Would it be marked? Yeah, we might be able to check if you can clean off some of that mud. Yeah, maybe or. see if there's an on-off position somewhere around this. Yeah, position. good observation. The picture in the dive plan looks like it was from when it was deployed. There's bright pink on on that picture. That is very. It's strange. possible that that's a reference photo from a different site. We have a few of these. Okay. Um, yeah, let's confirm. Good call. Good catch. I don't. Do we have a toilet brush? This is not the one that from the dive plan. No, the it's colors not. Colors are different. It doesn't say AMS on it. Hmm. Okay, well, I can just swipe the top and see if there's an on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to check to see there's what... Can we it looks like there's something blue there. Can we just look closer, zoom in maybe, and look on the ends? There's probably some yeah, painted in before that, we... Uh, dig around. Zoom in video. Roger right, right that. I can also ask Shore to dig up the original video of the that deployment. That looks blue. Looks like something. Uh, Looks like it says O N to me. Uh, yeah. No O F F. Yeah. Zoom in on the left there. See the blue marking. Yeah. I can't tell. That guy right there. Is that full zoom video? Oh no. no nope. I got a little bit more. It's not conclusive. Inconclusive. Inconclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Disconcerting. Hold on. Let me uh, like see what I can do and boot. Oh, uh, looks like O N to me. It does look like Looks Owen. like Owen to me. But, uh, it's definitely Owen. So maybe this one went down with the dummy in the battery connector. I just and they made it at subsea, perhaps. Okay. Uh. okay. And you can made it subsea when it's on. Oh, you would? Oh, yeah, I guess so. It'll displace the oil in the connector. You okay. wouldn't want... We never do that, but... This yeah. is strange. But even the one in the picture is wrong, then. No, I'm guessing. Yeah, you wouldn't do that because the pins are on the battery side. Huh. Yeah, okay. I'll do a bit of digging. Even the picture one is kind of the wrong then as well. Yeah. Either both these ones are labeled incorrectly or yeah. the one we deployed is labeled incorrectly. Or maybe, yeah, I don't know if the handle can go 180 degrees and then you can still close it. No, it cannot. Yeah would not fit. Okay, but let's assume this is on, based on the writing, and as soon as we start moving it, we'll know for sure. Yeah, and the one we sent down is off. We know that. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're, we're safe so far. 
just funny how it's different. Oh, Martin's on the chat. That's what he says. And um, Dirk, if you want to head down for dinner first, uh, uh, that's cool. Sure. Show, do you want to shut this one off? Well, we'll oh, dig. Thanks, Martin. We'll dig a little bit first. Did you have a brush, or are we brushless on this one? I think it, it looks think like on. But yeah, it's on. I yeah. think we can all agree it's on. And once we move it a little bit, we'll tell it'll dust yeah. itself a little bit. Yeah, it's safe to turn it on or off as is because all the connections are still mated. Martin says pretty sure the handle will go 180 degrees. All right, Martin, take your word for it. Okay, Danny, Dance, you explicitly yes, we can try Come to on, turn it. Jacob, yeah. phone wide. Okay, Jeff, you got this while I go eat. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, on coming out. Well, let me get a one quick snapshot. Are we good? Got it. Hey, Danny. Yes. As soon as you're done there, you can go eat as well. Or Jake can go eat. Yeah. Either way. I usually I'll go wait eat. for Megan to I'll do go a eat. swap. I'm fine with that. I'll go eat. All right, go eat. <laughs> This one went in in 2016, so I'll dig into the archives. I'm here to take stills. What do I do? Just push this button? I think it's, yeah, his, somehow his volume is not very, but maybe it's, maybe it's just me, I don't know. Try this. Yeah. It's, I, I, I normally... Definitely. I feel like I'm moving this whole entire unit. You can uh, grab it from the center or even push it up with the manipulator, it might be easier to, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we see off coming around. It does look like a 180 job, doesn't it? So is this like a, a, a Mercury switch inside of here? That's Exactly, uh, yeah. Okay. On the new one that's coming down, the on and off are labeled as 90 degrees apart, but that's just the minimum angle you need to rotate it to turn it on. Well, we've got it vertical right now. I think we need to keep going with this one to be sure until we get off pointing straight up. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look. OFF. Yeah. Mystery solved. There you go.
I don't know how this one was set up, so let's be safe and do whatever uh, the builder intended. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Looks like they intended 180. I believe so. <laughs> Nice, now we won't cook any bins. Uh, what you wanted? OFF? We can't off a bin yeah, that looks seconds. good to me. Thanks, Danny. Or OFI. <laughs> <laughs> Office of Fire Investigation? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure if Dirk mentioned this is going to be kind of like a test dive. This uh, system was uh, built a number of years ago, and there's a little bit of confusion about whether the RX and TX are correct on the BPR, which will be no surprise to the ROV guys who work with the 232 all the time. So I did my best guess based on the documents I have, and we'll see if it fires up. Uh, Too many times have little. we deployed instruments and they were backwards. Yeah. Kind of hard to switch the wires down here, though, right? <laughs> well, I was thinking about making a jumper, but the connectors are six grand each, and we just kind of <laughs> ran out of time. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 12,000 plus my time. And you do is you put an Arduino in there, and you have it where it just you can reverse the wires. Well, that Maris we deployed the other night, I did put a relay in to swap TX and RX. And can we you look at Herc, please? Didn't end up needing it, thankfully. Not that time. No. That's something we started adding to all the instruments that we deploy at ACO. Not a bad idea. So it looks to me like what we're looking at right in front of the ROV is uh, where the dredge was coming out. And then as I sneak ahead here, I would say the seismo is under one of them. Uh, is it there or is it? No, it could be over here. What's the uh, crop circle there? Got a nice reminder from shore. Crop circle? Oh. Yeah, coming into view now. Oh, that little spiral? Yeah. Oh, that's made by an animal. Yeah, not a seismometer. That's where we need like a... It's a uh, acorn worms usually make those spirally poops. Yeah, it could be an acorn worm. I'm going to bring down a stake, like an Acme sign that says, you know, seismometer pointing. Here lies the seismometer buried in my... <laughs> uh, there usually is a little stake sticking up. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. So you can see it in the sonar? Uh, no, just a marker, like, where to start digging. Oh. Got a good recommendation from uh, Dr. Heisman on shore. Maybe we can clamp that battery back down uh, just in case this is the platform that's coming up. It'd be nice in case we forget. I know. I think that would slip my mind. Can you uh, zoom in there for us, video? Okay, hold that. Living in the memory banks. Zoom Look at there. this tiny sea cucumber. Uh, push in there. It's so little. Is that a, some kind of marker sticking up there? No, I think it's just a stick. It yeah. doesn't look man made. There's usually a clue of where the actual. It wouldn't hurt touching it. Nah, I don't know. Seismometers. Okay, go in. Well, good luck getting that thing out. I have to pull the cable up.
Uh, can we go back to that other platform and uh, lock down that battery? Yeah, stand by. I'm looking for the... Uh, wow, that's a big hole. They wanted a location on the seismometer. Do you have a magnetometer on board? Well, oh. it's this yellow bit. If I jump around, maybe you'll... Uh, <laughs> Is that rope right in front of us? Yeah, yeah that's that's something man-made. It looks like a pull pin. It could be the top of the seismometer, but usually there's a stake, like with just barely sticking out, a little red black tape or something, marker. You take the down the Oinges Conicus. Actually, a bucket lid would have been perfect for this. Yeah, the bucket lid. I didn't know if a bucket lid would be too disturbing to the seismometer. We make sure that we uh, lock the sensing masses down from shore. So it's if it can handle me pushing it around on a pallet jack, okay. it should be pretty good. Is, right it, here. is it live right now? Uh, it is. Oh, it's not working, so it's not well, locked down. The seismometer is fine. Uh, they locked it down earlier, and I think they turned the port off as well. Right. We won't be doing any uh, plugging until we do. Yes, the port is off at the moment. Thank you. Yeah, I think Dan wanted to uh, drop down on top of it and try to triangulate its location. No, I was <laughs> trying to get a location for him. Well, there. there's the wire, right? Is that going to the seismometer? It is, yeah, but... It could curve around. Oh, so right. we, we had this offset before. Want to mm. just scoop underneath it, maybe see where? No, no. The wire is all pinned down with stakes, uh. so it doesn't strum in the breeze. That's how sensitive the instrument is. Ah, OK. Yep, I think bucket lids would have been the way to go. A dive rate and a bucket lid. Fill wow. me in. What's a bucket lid? It's like the so. top of a five-gallon bucket. Oh, okay. And we put a number on it or a tag or whatever, and so anytime we drop an instrument, we'll drop one of the bucket lids and we'll see it on sonar. Okay. But so it just gives a nice little sign of where it is. The right. bucket lid waving Marker. around in the current would be... Uh, it would be destructive, wouldn't it? It would could affect the instrument readings. Just okay. anything strumming, but yeah, they're... Yeah. Yeah, we won't do any poking around, but eyeballing it is fine. Yeah, I was thought maybe I could get an eyeball there, but Dan, if you could trying hit, uh, to bury uh, that must uh, be a very silty experience. Yes. You can land uh, on a 45 to the platform. That'll give me a little better arm maneuverability. I do. Yeah, Dan, have you dug one of these for us or for OOI? Yeah. Yeah. Several of them. Ballpark, how long did it take? Days. <laughs> <laughs> Several shifts. Yeah. Does the ROV get a tiny shovel? No, we have a dredge, and we dredge out a hole, then we put a caisson in, and then we uh, use the ROV as a hammer and pound on the caisson. <laughs> And then we dredge some more, then we hammer some more. And dredge. So it depends on the soil. Like sometimes it's easier to dredge out once you get them going, then you dredge out and press down and press that. I don't know. How tall is that? You good? Yeah. Caissons, I don't know. Uh, it's 24 inches or so, so yeah. plus or minus. <laughs> then you uh, put some glass beads in there. What the cross speed bags were originally for, and then uh, put the seismometer in there and put some more glass beads in there. Then you, uh, <coughs> after it's all done, you staple, we get a bunch of staples and push into the seabed to mm -hmm. hold the cable so it's not. Not wiggling around. Yeah. How many of those things are out here now? Oh, gee, I should know that off the top of my head. At least five. Yeah. One's not buried, as you saw. Clamp engaged. Right Thank there. you.
What do we get for uh, distance between the beacon and the package? Oh, from height from. Yeah, I for I heard I heard it, and I've forgotten it. Well, let me check my sonodyne here. I I have it up in two places in front well, of. Well, I mean, you won't know where the pack. They. It's. Uh, you know what de depth it is, but not necessarily how far away from the package the beacon is. Yeah, they put the beacon 20 meters up on the wire. Okay, like 20 that. meters. I, I don't know what the number. They is. did 25 last time. Hey, video, zoom in there. Full zoom. Now that little one, Megan. It's so cute. The uh, Megan's occupied. Little squatty. Oh yeah, little Munadopsis, little squat lobster. The dive plan says uh, put USBL 10 to 15 meters above clump. Roger. Boat plans <laughs> often obsolete by the time it hits the printer. Yeah. <laughs> In this case. There's two revs past that one, I think. Subject to change without notice. You didn't want to look at the lobster for a while? He started to crawl down. Yes. What's camera that? shy. He was camera shy. Roger. Ulrike, did we get the heading uh, for the uh, aqueduct for you? Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, I was about to ask if we are looking for a task, we could try to find whether one of these blue sensors on the aquadop has an X on it, if we can see it another biofouling, because that would be the location, uh, the direction that uh, that we'd be interested in, because mm -hmm. that um, would tell us what way the aquadop is facing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, aquadop has three blue dots. So Three blue dots. They are sensors for um, each direction in current direction, vertical, horizontal yeah. and something else. And one yeah. of these blue dots will have an X on it above or usually below the blue dots. But it will be hard to see. Yeah, I think it's engraved or debossed, so you might have to get in tight with the camera. On the one that's going down, it's highlighted in yellow, so... Oh. Oh, that yeah, the yellow on. X? <laughs> that's X the one you're looking for. Right? Potentially, cool. yeah. Cool. Can we line up with the X to get the head in? Sure. Or will we be sitting on the cable, because oh, we don't, don't want that? I don't have to land, but the cable's... Well, we're right at the pivot corner of it, so you could just do some math. <laughs> <laughs> Or we can just line up. I imagine it's nigh impossible to get a height of those transducers above the sea floor, right? That's two four out six of the question. seems like a good heading. Oh. Mm -hmm. No, we can two five five. Put the lasers on it. Two five five. Okay, yeah, and, w and work it out later. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, we don't have a inclinometer in our right I keep threatening to put one in there but yeah, that water bubble makes a really good uh, crosshair and look at the craft how did that get there uh, it's maybe the I don't know if that gives you a sense there what Not the lasers. height is if you shoot lasers at it they'll give you a good idea of height. Throw everything you got. We got a bit of time, if you're up for it. I thought we were changing out this platform. <laughs> well, it'd be nice to retroactively have those <laughs> metadata <laughs> to correct all of the previous years of data. I blind the blue dot and then pan over to the... Oh, I can't pan that far. But probably uh, middle of the craft there somewhere. The height of the dual knife, the knife rack. <laughs> Maybe we can get knife back. Magnetic knife racks are all in right now. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm gonna be adding one to the new guy when I get back. Mantis is good. gonna get a knife. Yeah, it's a good spot. It's a great spot. 
Yeah. Dan doesn't like it. He likes rummaging around in the toolbox. No, I like them there. It's nice to be able to <laughs> get the thing when you need it. Where we put them isn't too bad. Just like in a little holster in the front of the basket. Yeah, but we never get them back in there. Yeah. <laughs> We've tried. Every time we rip the holster off. Or what if you put a magnet in the basket? Danny. What was that? Look at Herc. I was. He just spun around on me. I know, but you're going to keep up on things. Okay, Martin's got the answer. We've got five of these. One at Barkley Canyon, Cascadia Basin, Clackwatt Slope, Mothra, which we saw earlier, uh, Endeavor Regional Circulation North, oh, which is the one we're at, West Flank, the long cable. There's some chunky sea cucumbers around here. Yeah. Look at that one. It's so fat and happy. I come down uh, 10 meters. I must say, I have no idea what sea cucumber you were looking at. Oh, it's the big purple thing off to the left. That's right, Psychobrotus. Yeah, probably. Or like Paleoptides. Uh, we're not going to be billed for this cable survey, are we? No, <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> I appreciate it. All Getting a nice look at this. Get a look at this mud mat. Look at Hercules, please. Video switching back to ah, Jake. Now you can't look at Hercules. That's Sorry. nice. We got a little bit of slack there, unless it's... Um, turn your auto head off. Danny. Strain relieved. And you can come down another six meters. Oh, look at those anodes, eh? Getting kind of crusty. Yeah. Time for some anode service. Yeah, you can tell it's kind of quiet down here when even the sea life isn't interested in the big feature. I think, was that one sea star we saw? Look at Owie on your cable there. Ooh. Little tight. You want to zoom in on that, Dan? Yeah, go ahead. Zoom in video. Can I do that? Some scuff in the jacket. Yeah. Okay, go away. Go away. Hmm. It's worth noting. It looks like the same uh, termination on the back of Hook. Does look very similar. Very edge of your leash. Yes, I am. Come down another five meters. Only 20 meters off bottom. Fifteen meters off bottom. Roger. Can't find you in my camera, can I? I no, you're there. looking the other way now. Well, I was looking right at you a second ago. Well, we're tail to tail now. I'm pulling you. You won't be able to spin around.
Anything else you want to see here, Jeb? No, that's more than a, I had in mind. Thanks. <laughs> okay, Not in a bad way. <laughs> you can uh, start coming back up. Oh, uh, uh, you want to get a take a position here, Megan? That's not Megan. Uh, sorry, Lynette. Sneaking up on me again. We're all the same. Sneaky. <laughs> is this the mud mat? It yep. is indeed the mud mat. Okay. Mud mat. Oh, it sinks in the mud. It's meant to not sink in the mud. Kind of like a doormat. Are you good? You want me to hang out for a minute? Oh, I'm good. Roger. Yeah, that's quite a bit farther away from where uh, they originally marked it. Well, <laughs> yeah. I have a 2023 offset. Okay, I'm coming up. Roger. Turn on my auto heading again. There's a bit of history coming in from shore. Martin said the cable was originally intended to reach the KEBB caisson, a previous site. Uh, didn't quite make it, but he says it looks like we gave it all we had. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be pretty tight there. Yeah. So, Dirk, the only uh, operational thing you missed was we put the clamp back on the battery when it was in the off position, just in case it's the one we're going to recover and, you know, get it ready. Okay. 30 meters off. So bottom. you were able to get the clamp on. Yeah. Even in the office. We did 180 right. degrees on the battery. Really? And the off label came up directly on top. I wouldn't have thought that would work. Yeah, there's enough clearance, I guess. Why would we want it clamped down when on? I don't know. It's a good it question. You, you never want to recover it with it on. Yeah, it seems like. So the crab can't flip it off for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> or a wave. Um, oh, but me. the one I put down, you can also turn it 180. Like yeah, yeah. It's just the minimum is 90 degrees before it'll turn on. Gotcha. All yeah. right. Well, there we go. Yeah. And we got a nice survey of the mud mat in there too. Mud mat. Mud mat. Okay. I'm gonna head downstairs for a bit. What's that? Gonna grab some food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Yeah. Trying to find your hook, where are you at? Yeah, somewhat. There you are. Tried to find the seismometer too, but <coughs> could it? I didn't see any telltale. No, marker sticking out. We didn't see it at all either. I mean, that must be perfect for the science. No, like weird eddies or turbulence. Well, there's usually a little uh, stake, like a steel stake, next to the caisson. But I didn't see anything. Well, Just little nub sticking out, and I couldn't find anything. Yeah, there's normally something, right? Like either the north marker was left, or the handle of this of the seismometer stuck. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Someone did, we a did job. We did see a little yellow, uh, like a pull rope thing. So, but that could have been the rigging to take it off the porch. So, have we kind of changed our idea of where we want to um, land this, or we're we still in the same spots? No, I think. Uh, Anything kind of like... It's going to have to be similar to how it was the other day. Mm. It will... Uh, like anything west of this frame would probably be okay, as long as we don't land it on the white cable. So, where it is currently coming down, if I line up with Atlanta behind me on my happy heading there, yeah. I think. So, uh, spin around to the same heading as her for us, Danny. You can uh, come up 10 meters to there. 
Uh, let's move uh, 20 south, wouldn't it? Bridge, nav. Can we move two zero meters south, please? Thank you. It's just, it says at a, the ship's currently at zero meters deep. That's, that's a good thing. Beacons at one, five, five, one, one, five, five. Um, in the height between Release and beacon, package and beacon, what's that height? Plus two. Okay. Gotcha. It's very dusty with no current. It's going to make things interesting. Ah. Yeah, I think so. Works for me. Um, um, we could do it on this side, but then we have to. It'd be nice not to have to drag that media thingy because that's gonna see how dusty it is here and how long it's staying dusty. So we pick that thing up. It's gonna be a giant dust storm for days. Yeah, I don't I don't see a solution where we <clears throat> Yeah. I don't know if we landed it uh Let me see if the lasers won't go there. If we landed it where the lasers are now. Then we, what's that? 